Now on to uh, more important matters here. Mr. McMahon, first thoughts on the documentary. I mean, essentially for you, it's a full-on review. You haven't finished it yet completely, but you pretty much watch 90% of it. I've only seen the first two episodes, so I've seen a third of it. Um, based on what people were saying about it a couple days ago, it's pretty much what I expected it to be. I mean, I honestly thought it would be a little bit worse, more salacious, because Vince obviously came out on Twitter, and the guy's only tweeted three times in two years. So you know it's a big deal when he or whoever he's you know being represented by puts out a tweet about the documentary, which was like, why unintentionally promote it by even talking about it or addressing it? Maybe he saw a different cut of it, I don't know. But, you know, I mean, a lot of it is what we already knew, but as we were discussing before I hit record here... It's a lot of the one-liners, the editing techniques, and it it's not, doesn't make anyone look bad. But, like, a lot of the people they talk to and just some of the stories they share, a lot of which we already know, just hearing them talk about it was the most entertaining thing of the entire documentary. So, like I said, you've seen a lot more of it than I have. What are your top takeaways so far from the Mr. McMahon doc on Netflix? Yeah, I would say it's, pr- I would say it's pretty good. Definitely worth watching. I think a lot of, like... I haven't finished the last episode, so I guess maybe some of the newer stuff I've heard of, but pretty much everything before I either heard of or knew of, so I wouldn't say it's, like, newer information. I mean, I think it's an overall good documentary. I mean, Hogan's on here lying his ass off every episode, so that's a good, that's a good touch to it, but, uh, no, I mean, I think overall, I think it's pretty good, like I said, but, I mean, it's not, like, new, new information, but the editing, it's worth the editing alone. They have some of the funniest editing in this documentary that you've ever seen it's one person saying one thing and then editing to another person saying that's completely false or something else so yeah. definitely worth it for that but uh pretty funny stuff but i think like i said i haven't finished the last episode yet but what i've seen so far none of it's really been any new information um that i've ever heard of like they kind of go from vince buying it to killing the territories to wcw to them beating them you read those aggression into i guess current day so Nothing too, too new, but, I mean, it's still definitely worth watching. I mean, it is worth saying that it's not new to us, but do you think with a platform such as Netflix that, I mean, they do six episodes on the guy, an hour each approximately, um, that this documentary is tailored more to, you know, less of us, like the wrestling fan base, and more so just the general public to kind of inform them, you know, what wrestling is in the first WrestleMania, and obviously the controversies had to be covered, and they are. But I feel like... I mean, we're entertained by it for different reasons, and I feel like the average person who hasn't watched wrestling in a long time might be. Um, I I feel like, obviously, they did that for a reason, and I feel like that might be for the better, because they just cut into the controversies. People that are just watching this for the first time and know nothing about Vince or really just know the bare-bones stuff based on what they've seen of him in the news in the last two years might be confused. So, I mean, the way that they covered it, I mean, it really wasn't for us, but I could totally see why they did that, though. No, yeah, I think it's depending on the certain factors. Like you said, for us, I think it's stuff that we've already seen before, so it's not, like, too groundbreaking, but I feel like you have to put in a little bit more substance um, than just, like, what we know because it's going to it's gonna try to go to, like, a main base audience. So Vince, when he said out, when he put out that statement, he said that, um, you know, just the editing techniques and the way that they kind of make me kind of come across in the documentary. Like I said, it must have been a different version that they sent to him before they edited it further or whatever, because based on what I've seen, what I've heard, and what you've seen, which is pretty much almost the entire thing, it doesn't really seem like that there's much that is said that he doesn't say himself that makes him look any worse than he already does if that makes sense. And there was also the report for a while there, I think from Meltzer maybe, because he was obviously in it, so he probably watched the first cut of it a while ago, um, that WWE wasn't happy with it. You know, they weren't happy with either what they covered or what they said. But again, a lot of this is just public knowledge, and you can't just gloss over the controversies. And not only that, too, a lot of this stuff has to do with Vince himself, who's no longer there. Now, that doesn't mean all the problems have gone away or that they, you know, there isn't still stuff that needs to be addressed. But I don't know, I'm just kind of sitting here wondering what Vince, and specifically WWE, were really all that upset about. Because it's not all just rainbows and puppies and shit, but there really isn't anything that makes them look worse. Maybe it's just because they're bringing back old information and bringing it to the public's attention again. I'm not really sure what they would be bothered by specifically. Yeah, from what I've seen, I mean, you kind of glossed, or kind of said it, what it the way it is. I mean, he's saying majority of the stuff, so I don't know if it's just 
looking back on it now, like, hey, I really wish I didn't say that, or the, the way it came off sounds worse than I intended it to say, but, I mean, majority of the stuff's coming out of his mouth, so I'm not really sure exactly what they're upset about. Um, I mean, I wouldn't say it was, like, the worst things I've ever heard. I mean, he does say some pretty stupid shit halfway through, but, I mean, it's a fan, so I kind of expected it, but I wouldn't say it was, like, a lot of damning things that he said so far. No, I mean, a lot of it's it's stuff that he says himself. I mean, in the second episode alone, they're talking about the female referee, Rita Chatterton. Rita Chatterson, I forgot how you pronounce her last name specifically, but, um, I mean, I mentioned this before we hit record here, but it was just, I, I can't believe he actually said this. He goes, because they show all the clips of her talking about, um, you know, how he raped her and all this other sort of stuff from, from decades ago with her talking about this. And I've seen the clips, they covered it in Dark Side of the Ring and all these other places. So I've seen that stuff before, but hearing Vince address it for the first time in a, in a forum like this was interesting. And he doesn't deny that he was actually with her. He said that he was, because he said that it was consensual. And he said, well, it wasn't rape because it was consensual. But if it was rape, the statute of limitations ran out anyway, so it doesn't matter. Like, again... I said this before we hit record, but the fact that he would say that on a public forum, like, there, there's no editing trick that would make that seem any better than, or any worse or whatever than what the fuck it is. I mean, he literally said that word for word, and uh, that that says a lot without saying much at all, so I just thought that was, a lot of it, just just hearing the shit come out of his mouth was pretty amazing, so, um, like you said, it was it's well recommended, I would recommend any fan check it out, you're not gonna learn a whole ton that we don't already know if you like watching the Dark Side of the Ring stuff. You know, the steroid trials and all that shit is covered as it should be. You don't really learn new much in the way of new information. Um, but I honestly think it might be worth watching more for, like, the non-wrestling fan, honestly. Um, I think it's a nice little precipice, you know, a little you know preview, I guess, so to speak, of what non-fans can expect uh, from what WWE being on Netflix, and hopefully not to expect, really, with what the old guard kind of, uh, you know, was with Vince McMahon in charge and stuff like that, so... I, I think this might be more for the non-fan than it is for us, like we talked about before. Yeah, I would say it's if you, for at least information-wise, it's definitely for a non. I would say for the non-fan, um, like you said. I, I mean, maybe that's why WWE is kind of upset because it's like they're going to Netflix and they're gonna have this kind of. Depending on how people see this, it's just kind of like have a perceived notion on the company already. So, um, but I think it's definitely a must-watch for any wrestling fan. Yeah, I mean, it is crazy, too. They didn't interview a whole lot of women for this thing, considering the circumstances. I mean, I know this. a lot of it was filmed before the Janelle Grand stuff came out, before the first allegations were made back in 2022. I get that, but, you know, still, it's it's a lot of it's... I mean, a lot of it is people, you know... And he was, in a lot of ways, a genius for how he kind of revolutionized wrestling and the territory system going away and whatever... But the first two episodes are a lot of like, man, this guy's great, like, he knows what he's doing, and, you know, whatever. And again, you kind of have to cover that stuff, um, but it's just the circumstances are interesting because of what we know now. And had we known now, um, if they knew that then, I'm sure a lot of these same people would not be on there. I mean, we said it before, Bruce Pritchard, I'm sure, would still be on there praising Vince, um, as would Hulk Hogan, among other people. But, um, yeah, they do say several times that a lot of these interviews were recorded pre-lawsuit, pre-2022 scandal, um, and all that other sort of stuff, which was very interesting. I, I mean, they got Vince for many hours of interviews, and then they said that as soon as the first uh, scandal came out from the Wall Street Journal in 2022, he canceled the final interview. And uh, I think that alone, I mean, I guess why would he do it anyway and, and risk being asked about it, but... Um, I think that also speaks volumes, too. So definitely check it out on Netflix. I'm going to watch the rest of it and talk more about it um, at another time when I watch the full thing. But it's certainly got a lot of uh, memorable one-liners from uh, Tony, uh, I must say Tony Khan, Tony Atlas alone, among other people. They got Phil Mushnick in there, which was an interesting cameo. was not expecting to see him, uh, among many other people. So definitely check it out when you get a chance. 